Hey you guys, welcome back to Crab Central Station. I'm so excited about this video where we are going to review your crab attacks that you have submitted. So we're just going to randomly pick a couple because we had so many that you guys submitted, which is amazing. And we can't do them all in one video. It would be hours long. So instead we will do several parts um, to this video. So this is just part one of our reactions to your tanks. And if you don't make it into this video, just hang tight. You'll make it into another one um, in the future. So I also want to just mention that, you know, Hermit Crab Husbandry is, it's a journey. It's a journey for all of us. And we all start somewhere and hopefully we're growing and learning and improving things um, all the time, right? So please just, you know, be supportive and be a community that we can encourage each other um, and grow from each other and get ideas from each other. That's really what we want this channel to be all about. And so you may see tanks today that are just beginning their journey. And um, you might see somebody who has been, you know, taking care of from a for a really long time and has a very developed tank. So know that we're going to have a wide spectrum of tanks to look at and we can all learn from each other um, from the beginning to years of experience and let's just support each other and encourage each other along that way. So let's get started. Okay so our first tank comes from Abby and she has owned hermit crabs for nine years. She has two tanks for us to look at. One is a 30 gallon with a hood light and one is a 35 gallon with a 15 gallon topper that uses a UVB light. She has a heat mat that makes sure the tank stays warm between 77 to 85. Um, she's using Eco Earth and Play Sand Mix as her substrate between six inches to nine inches. And she's got climbing things up in her topper. <laughs> the crabs keep knocking it down. We know how that goes. She currently has six hermit crabs split between the two tanks and four of them are rescues. That's amazing. We love that you're rescuing hermit crabs. Um, that's a great way to put a stop to the horrific industry and to help those crabbies that need to be rehomed um, into a place where they're really taken care of. So I love that just to start out with. All right, let's see. Love these pictures. We've got some really cute pictures of her crabbies. That's so cute. He's climbing on the, looks like some natural wood climbs. Excellent. Um, this is a picture of her saltwater pool, it looks like. Um, you even have um, some great ways to climb in and out. And it looks like maybe shells and rocks on the bottom for traction. That's excellent so your crabs don't get stuck in there. It looks like you're filtering your pool, so that helps a lot on water changes. Okay, you have a nice shelf in your topper. Actually looks a lot like one of the shelves that we have and um, add some things up there if you want. I see that you have some climbs for them to get up there. You know, we use this little mat. You can find it in the reptile section. It's kind of like a felt uh, material and we just put it along the shelf so that they can have some good traction and it's easy to take out and clean if you need to. So I see a lot of natural wood, which is great because they can climb on it and they can eat it. Your sub is very deep and it looks like a great mix. The five to one of you go over to sand, um, play sand. I see your heat mat and your lights. You've got a lot of really great things going on in this crab attack. Just a note on that pool. Uh, let me go back before I move on. So that's actually the same size pool we use in our tanks, but you're using this in your 30, it looks like, the one without the topper. And if you have trouble with too high of humidity, it might be that your pool is too big. So just keep an eye on that. Um, you know, we have the, that size pool in our 90s and 120s and 125s and things like that. So um, it might be fine. I, it doesn't look like there's a lot of condensation on your tank. I don't know if it was wiped before you took pictures or what, but something just to keep an eye on if you do struggle with high humidity, your pool to tank ratio could be the culprit to that. Okay, your next tank is the one with the topper. Again, you've got some great natural wood up here. Um, I see a moss pit. Maybe you're using like a soap dish or something like that. Guys, we use those all the time. You can get them in the bathroom section and put moss in there or use that as your shell shop too. It's, those are just super great and affordable. Um, you've got your gauges in both tanks, so that's really good. I might suggest maybe if you lift the one in this 35 gallon with your topper off the sub, you might get some better readings. You can do that. I see leaf litter, which is great. Your crabs are gonna love all of that. 
cocoa huts for hiding, more cute pictures of your crabbies, great food um, options for them here as well. So I would say overall, you are doing amazing, um, Abby. And you know, I just had a few things for you maybe that just some suggestions that you might wanna look at or keep an eye on. But other than that, I think you're doing a great job and those Krabbies are super lucky to be with you. So now we are going to look at Melissa's Krabbitat that she entered. And she says, hi, Crab Central Station. This is my tank. There are two hermit crabs. Uh, but I do have a smaller tank and there are two hermit crabs molting at the moment in that one. On the um, bottom of the tank, there's a heat mat. The depth of the substrate of sand and cocoa peat is three times um, bigger than my largest hermit crab. And my hermit crabs are very small. And just a day ago, she moved them into this tank that she's showing us now from a smaller tank. So let me pull these pictures. All right, Melissa, looks like you are currently using what we would call a tote. And um, those are kind of temporary housing um, for your hermit crabs, not really a good long-term solution um, for them, mostly because it's very difficult to regulate heat and um, humidity in there. Also, it's not a very stable container. I'm sure you've noticed when you move it, the substrate shifts pretty easily so that's dangerous for your molters as well also it's really difficult to see your hermit crabs and of course you want to be viewing them um, you know if you're having them as a pet so you want to have access to seeing them in the side because if you have to take the lid off in order to view them all of your heat and humidity is immediately escaping out of that tub and so um, that's something that I would 100% recommend is finding them a more permanent tank. And right now it is the dollar per gallon sale at Petco. It's August. I think that's usually when they run them. Um, so you could get, you know, a 20 gallon for 20 bucks. The other day I was there and saw like this really cool 35 gallon tank. So I would definitely look into getting them um, a tank, an aquarium tank that is a more permanent home for them. You can look on Craigslist, Facebook market. You can go to um, like a local aquarium store. Sometimes people donate their aquariums that no longer hold water and you don't need yours to hold water. You just need it to be, you know, stable enough for the substrate. So that'd be a great way to get a discount on the tank as well. Um, also, it looks like you do have your play sand and your cocoa peat or your eco earth. However, you have them side by side and really you want to mix those together really well because the eco earth on its own becomes very acidic over time. And it's those two elements together that create the um, ability to hold the humidity in your tank and hold molt caves as they dig and tunnel and molt. Okay, so I would definitely, if you don't have molters right now in this tote, I would mix it up. Also, I think you are doing a great job having climbing right here with your um, Repta Lounger kind of climbing net. Um, those are really nice, the crabs love them. You have two pools in here, so great job. You're offering fresh water and salt water. And if the shells in this picture are the correct size of your hermit crabs, because um, I don't see them in the picture, but if they're the correct size, those pools are probably okay for right now. And as they grow, you'll just need to upgrade your pools to be bigger. Um, also, I love that you're using a soap dish for your moss pit. You know, if you're having trouble with humidity, you can always dampen that moss. And you've got a structure here. I think they're called a crabboos climbing structure maybe. Um, I'm not really sure what that wood is made out of, so you might want to check on that. If it's pine, that's not a safe wood for your crabs, um, and you instead could have replaced it with cork bark or choya, something like that. Um, Mopani, grape, uh, grape wood, those are all good choices. Um, I do see that you have extra shells, so great job. Your crabbies do need growth shells to be moving into, and they're natural, so well done on that. I also see down here that you've got a hide for them so they can feel safe. Well done. Uh, the last thing that I want to really point out is that you said in your email your heat mat was under your tote and um, you're going to need to move that because that becomes very dangerous as your crabs dig down to molt. So they will actually go to the very bottom of this tub and then they will be sitting directly on that heat mat, which is very dangerous for them. So you wanna go ahead and take that off the bottom of your tote and instead stick it on the back side um, of your tote because you're really trying to just heat the air in that 
tank, um, not the actual substrate. Um, also, a gauge will help you know what the heat and the humidity is in there. So um, I would definitely look at getting a gauge to help you out so you know where you're at with your heat and humidity. I appreciate your entry and I hope that those suggestions are really helpful um, and thanks for supporting our channel. All right, you guys, this is going to be the last one for this tank review video, but we will cover the rest of yours in future videos. So keep a lookout for that. This one comes from Emily and she says, Hey guys, this is my 105 gallon tank. It's a 65 gallon with a 45 Exoterra on top. It houses four large jumbo crabs. Um, they have two and a half gallon filtered pools, two shell shops, a wheel, lots of places to climb and hide, 10 inches of substrate. Uh, it seems like she's doing something to improve every day. It's pretty tall and she's short, so she needs a stool. We just bought a stool for one of our tanks, so we totally get that. And I'm actually kind of tall, so yes. Um, and then she said thanks for being such amazing advocates for hermit crab care. Thank you so much for your support. We really do appreciate that. Um, let's take a look at your tank, Emily. Wow. Awesome. Okay. So there's so much going on, but it's really cool. Um, I love your topper and that is some awesome deep substrate. Looks like the perfect mix of five to one ratio. Um, you've got hides everywhere. Your crabbies have got to feel completely safe in this place and you have enrichment from the top to the bottom and side to side. They can never be bored in your tank with all of this climbing. The ladders, um, looks like you've got a jute wrapped kind of dowel rod to help them get up to the topper. That's really neat. Um, your gauge is in the middle of the tank off the substrate. Perfect. Um, I really like how you've created some additional levels using shelves and things like that. So I'm going to take some ideas here from your tank and add it to mine. I really like that. Um, you've got your wheel that's up on the side of the substrate. That's really neat. I use the saucers in almost, well, in all of my tanks, but um, after seeing some of these tanks that you guys have said, uh, sent in, I'm gonna try one of the ones on the side like you have. Uh, those are the same size pool we use. I think they're great. I love how you've used um, the light filters to create the ladders like that. Your cocoa huts that are hanging over, your grass mat up the back is amazing. Um, I think I'm going to add that to one of my tanks in the future as well. You've got some great natural woods for them, all of the leaf litter. I see great food, a huge shell shop on the bottom floor and on the second floor. So they've got a lot of natural shell choices. All right. I really have a hard time finding anything to suggest to you because I mean, you're just really doing a great job here, Emily, but I will just point out, um, and maybe you already know this, but for the viewers watching, when you add a topper, um, it doesn't add to your overall tank size as far as the amount of crabs that you could house. Now, Emily only has four jumbos here in her tank, which is a 65 gallon on the bottom. And so she's well within, you know, the correct size for her crabs that she needs for her tank. Um, yes, she has a topper, which is a 45 gallon topper, and that's where she's getting her 105 total number from. But when you are thinking about how many crabs you can fit in your size tank, you do not want to include the gallons of your topper in that because what we're looking for is safety and molting. And so when you calculate, you know, your number of crabs, you want to make sure they have enough molt space because that's when it gets dangerous if it's too many crabs to a smaller tank. So in a 65 gallon tank, you would want to stick to about six crabs. She's got jumbos. So I love that she has four because that gives them even extra room as they're molting. Um, now the, the toppers are amazing for climbing because your hermit crabs love to climb. They're land hermit crabs, right? They live kind of in the foresty areas and stuff. So um, they're great for that. But again, just don't add that to um, meaning that you can have even more crabs in that tank. Thanks you guys so much for sending in all of your tanks. That was amazing. And I love seeing what you're doing in your crab habitat so that I can improve mine. And I hope that you guys all picked up some ideas on how you can improve your crab habitat for your crabs. And it just makes it so much more fun to always be changing things and making them better and learning and growing. That's what this journey is all about. So I appreciate that you guys took the time to share your crab habitats with us and allow us to share them with viewers so we can all 
just be supportive and encourage each other in this community. So thank you so much. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel so that you can get a notification when we drop our new videos. Like, comment, share these, you guys, so more people can know about hermit crabs, be educated and advocate for them. And if you haven't already followed us on our social medias, go do that right now. We send out pictures, videos, announcements all the time on those. So make sure that you're following us. Until then, you guys, we'll see you later. Bye.